Okay, here we have a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. So in order to solve this, we need to look at some corresponding polynomial. So let's consider the following polynomial. So we'll look at u squared minus 2u plus 2, and then we want to find the roots of this polynomial. So in other words, we want to set this equal to zero and solve for u. So maybe first we should try factoring this polynomial, but um, I'll just clear that up. We can't factor this polynomial um, as a product of integers, so maybe we should use the quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, That'll give us u equals, so negative b, so that's 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that'll be 4, minus 4 times a times c, so that's minus 8 all over 2. So now notice that's equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 all over 2. So that means our roots are 1 plus or minus i. So here we can take the square root of negative 4 to be 2i, so we've got 1 plus i and 1 minus i. So now using, using the general strategy for solving these, we know that the roots of this complementary polynomial to this differential equation will give us the solutions to this differential equation. So that means our general solution is of the following form. So we have y equals c1 e to one of these roots. So we'll take 1 plus i times x plus c2 e to the 1 minus i times x. Okay, so this may seem like a problem because we want a real function, but we have a function that contains complex numbers. But there's a way out of this. So we'll use the following exponent rule. So we can use e to the a times e to the b equals e to the a plus b, which is true for all complex numbers. So that'll allow us to write this as c1 e to the x times e to the i x plus c2 e to the x e to the minus i x. Good. And now notice we can factor an e to the x out of this. So that leaves us with y equals e to the x c1 e to the i x plus c2 e to the minus i x. Okay. Good. And next step is we want to remember Euler's formula. Which allows us to deal with imaginary exponents of the exponential function. So Euler's formula gives us the e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And likewise, this is true for all values of theta, so if we set theta equal to negative theta, we'll get e to the minus i theta equals cosine of theta minus i sine of theta. Where since cosine is an even function, we can replace cosine of minus theta with cosine of theta, and since sine is an odd function, we can bring the minus sign out. So now what we want to do is use Euler's formula in this general solution, move things around until we have something that only uh, has real values in it. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so in our previous step we ended here. So we started with this differential equation, y double prime minus 2y prime plus 2y equals 0. We got that the general solution is of this form with these imaginary exponents, and the hint was to use Euler's formula which is given here. So let's see what that will give us. So here we'll have e to the x, and then we have c1 times, now set x equal to theta, so we'll have cosine x plus i sine x plus c2, and then we'll have cosine x minus i sine x. Good. And now we can 
put all of this together. So this will give us e to the x, and then we'll have c1 plus c2 times cosine of x plus c1 minus c2 times sine x. Good. And now what we can do is, sorry, I'm missing an i here, times i sine x. <clears throat> and now what we can do is let capital A be C1 plus C2, and capital B be C1 minus C2 times I, and that allows us to write a general solution as follows. We have Y equals E to the X, and then A times cosine X plus capital B times sine X, where A and B are real numbers. So this is the most general solution of this differential equation. <clears throat> and you might be worried here because it looks like B may not be a real number, but in fact, if you're considering this as a function of real variables and you have initial conditions that only have real variables here, once you solve for C1 and C2 or A and B, you'll see that everything will be real in the end, even though we used complex numbers as a tool for this problem. So this is our final solution.